Hello! In this video, we'll look at how to link different data sources together in M-Water and Solstice, which is a question that comes up quite often. So, if you have data in one survey and another survey, can you show them side by side in a table or in a chart? And the answer is yes, you can. And the short version of it is that what you need to do by default is to connect to these different surveys through the same site. So that means a water point, a school, a health facility, anything that's considered a site in a water or solstice. And then you can get what we have here in this example image on the right side. For example, a table where one column shows data from the school site, then some columns show data from your survey A, and other columns on the same line show data from a totally different type of survey, survey B. So in this video, we'll go through a step-by-step -step example of how to approach this, a simple example having to do with schools. So let's get going. Let's imagine that we want to map a set of schools that we'll be working in for a number of years. We have one survey that's about registering the school in the first place that allows us to collect some initial information for the baseline, things that might not change. I'm keeping these surveys very simple, but remember in water and solstice, you can make these surveys as comprehensive as you need to. The other survey is a school visit survey that can be completed many times, anytime you would visit the school as part of your work in this hypothetical example. In my very simple school registration survey, I just have three questions. Critically, I have a school site question. So if I edit this, I have the type is a site or asset question, and the site asset type is school in my use case. You may want to pick a water point, sanitation facility, or something else for whatever your purpose is. I've called it, what school is this survey for? I then have a drop-down question I'm imagining that I'm, we run a number of projects and you always want to know which project is this school linked to, something that you only need to enter once, let's say. So that makes sense to collect in my registration survey. And then I will, in this example, collect the amount of people initially enrolled at the school at this baseline level. I've then deployed this survey so we can go through an example. But let's take a look at the other survey. This is a school visit survey that's just a little bit more complex, and this is something that can be filled many times, essentially any time the school is visited as part of the project. Again, I begin with the school site question, because I need to connect both of these surveys to the same school site so that I can ask the database to show me this school and a given school, and then data from the registration survey and the school visit survey. So this is a site or asset question of the type school. I also record the date of the visit explicitly so I know um, when it happened. I might want to compare the current enrollment against the baseline in this example. This can be anything in your own work. I might give the school a rating based on some logic, A to F, and I might have a free form comment for it. And again, I've deployed this survey. So you need to deploy a survey so that it's active for one or more data collectors. I can now jump into my app. Now, this is the surveyor uh, for mWater at app.mwater.co. I've deployed my surveys. And let's imagine that I want to register a new school. I start my school registration survey. I've got three schools in my example data set already, but let's maybe add one more. Let's make it protected, managed by me, and place it on the map. So this would be the first time this school gets mapped, if it doesn't exist already. I'll create it, and now I can refer to this again. I know that this is for Project D. I'll say that there were 210 people based on the initial estimate of how many people there are. Let's say I come back in some months' time, I can then do the school visit the survey. Now I need to select the same school, the one I just created, to make sure it's an update for that. Let's say this visit was in November. And let's say that the enrollment went down to 198, and the school rating 
the D. Give some informative comment for this example. And then I sync my data, of course, to send it back. So how can we get this data that we've now submitted for both of these surveys to show up together in a data grid like this one? And the steps we'll cover essentially also apply for tables and dashboards, as well as um, you can do some of the same things for charts and so on, maps and whatever. So now we see we've added um, this fourth school. I had already gotten three schools before. And let's see what's here. And then let's recreate this table so you understand step by step how to get to this point. We get the school name from the school site. So we map that school. It's a different thing in the system. And here we have the name for it. We had the registration survey. And from there, we get the project that the school is associated with, as well as this initial enrollment. It says latest initial enrollment because we might do more than one registration survey, though I assume we only do one. If there were many, it would pick the latest one. And everything to the right of that is coming from the school visit survey, so a different data source, but it, both of them are linked to the same school. So I see the latest date of the visit, the latest enrollment, the latest rating, and latest comments in this case. So this structure is especially good when you want to compare a baseline to the latest visit. If you want to see absolutely every response for a, a survey you visit every week, um, you are better off starting with the data source of that survey where you want everything. A good rule of thumb is that the data source you pick, that's where you get every row from that table in the database. So if you want to see every school with these surveys, you start with schools. If you want to see every survey response for a given survey, and not just the latest, then you start with that survey at the data source. So how do we build this ourselves? Let's do that by creating a new data grid. And this is the key step. We start configuring our data grid, and we pick schools as the unifying data source. The first column to re recreate what we did, let's pick name. But now, to get to our first survey, we add a column and go down here to related surveys. So surveys that are linked by a question to school. So if your survey has that site or asset question and you have linked it to a school type, you will then be able to pick it out in this data source selection when you are building your charts, dashboards, visualizations, maps, etc. I will add a related survey, so I will then get shown all of the surveys that are available to me that have this school question. Uh, it doesn't automatically load everything because there can be so many. I will add the school registration survey. While I'm at it, I will add the school visit survey. And now you see that they've become uh, ingredients or available branches in my data source. So let's say I wanted to get the project name. So I navigate to related surveys, my related survey, in this case, the school registration one, and then find the question I'm interested in. Which project is this for? Let's see what happens. Okay, we get schools, we get a lot of them, and we get this registration column. Now what's happening is that we say to the database, can you bring me a list of all the schools in the system that I can see? So what we want to do as the immediate next step is to filter this table down to just the schools we are interested in. This can be done by, for example, setting the managed by. If you've set the schools to be managed by an organization, you can narrow it down very easily. Or if you're working in a location, that may help as well. But here's my recommendation. You can add a filter and go to related surveys. And what I want to do is only show those schools where I have completed the registration survey. So I only want a table of those schools in Mwater where this school registration survey has been filled in. So I go to related surveys and I pick the number of school registration surveys. What does that mean? It is just a number of how many times this registration survey has been filled in for any given school. It may be zero, it may be one, it may be more than one. 
So now I just say that it has to be greater than zero or greater than equal one. And now I should get only the four schools where this is true. So only these four schools at the moment have my registration survey. So be sure to filter your table. Now we can proceed. We will add the other column from the school registration survey, like so, the initial enrollment. And then we will jump over to the other survey. And now we can bring data from there. The date of the visit, and I can make these headers shorter here. Again, related survey, visit info, current enrollment. And you're getting the idea. And this doesn't have to be limited to just two surveys. You can do what you need to do based on your workflow and needs. Latest comments. So now we get this great table that brings data from three different places. We get the name of the school from the site. We get the registration information in the next columns from our first survey. And then finally, all the rest shows the latest visit we've completed, if any, for this given school. And that, in a nutshell, is how you can combine data from different data sources using surveys and sites in mWater. A very powerful trick to master. So give it a practice, give it some thought. What's the best way for you to make use of this ability to uh, reduce the amount of any duplicate data that you collect and visualize and display all the important information you need in the same place? Uh, hopefully that was useful to you. If you've got questions or suggestions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to have a great day.